maybe you ha you're feeling not comfortable in a foreign country, but the more you are feeling comfortable inside yourself, it doesn't matter where you are based. It doesn't matter where you are relocating. This kind of sense of peace inside, being really comfortable in your own skin, it also allows you to very quickly adapt to different cultures. Welcome to the Empowered Expat Woman Show, the place to celebrate your courage, inspire you to dream and play bigger, and support you in creating a truly fulfilled life across borders. I'm your host, Camilla Quintana, and I believe your future is too important to get lost in translation. So, are you ready to make the most of your life abroad? Then let's get started. All right, welcome back, my lovely Empowered Expat women. Uh, today, I have a special guest with us, Valerie Kim. Welcome, Valerie, to the Empowered Expat Woman Show. Hi, thank you for having me today. Thank you for being here. We're going to have some amazing things to discuss. Valerie is such a versatile, uh, multicultural soul, so I'm really excited to interview her about all of these things. But before we jump into the questions, let me quickly introduce you to my audience. So uh, Valerie Kim is the founder of Colibri Productions Company. She's an author, a psychologist, a world champion athlete. Oh my God. And she has lived in five different countries and is currently on a mission to light up people to be their true self, to speak up with their gifts and their abilities. Yay. So, <laughs> yes, it's an honor to have you here. Um, you have so much to look back on and share, even though you're obviously still very young. So why don't you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about your journey up till now? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your podcast. And I'd love to always connect with like expats, people who have this multicultural background. Like in this context, I would say I, I really hated the question, where are you from? Because I didn't know what to answer. You know, I was born in Kazakhstan, in Central Asia, but I'm Korean and my native language is Russian. Um, like I had this uh, Indonesian name because it's my husband's name. And, and uh, recently I decided to go back to roots and return my Korean family name. But also I'm a citizen of Germany who is based in Poland, lived in different countries. And, and, and in the past, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, who I am. And this was like the biggest insecurity for me. That's why I didn't really know what to say when people were asking me because I was perceived me like a crazy person, especially when you know, when you leave, just you were born in one city, you spend the whole life there and you don't really, you know, think that people are actually different. They have different backgrounds. They have their life stories and it's always something to embrace. But when you really step up in your power and turn any security to your strength, I think it really helped me to build up companies no matter where I am. And I lived in Asian like countries. I lived in UAE. I'm in, now based in Europe. And I think no matter what kind of projects I do, because in the past I was doing uh, business events under the brand Independent Women Summit. Uh, now I'm producing documentaries and, uh, you know, no matter what kind of products I'm creating, it's always multinational. So I think this is my strength to unite people because I don't see people as like, what is your race? What is your age? I mean, we have one race, it's humanity. The age is also, it doesn't define you because, you know, we are souls and we are really wise inside all of us. It's just like takes time to tap into this, um, you know, inner source, so to say. Yeah. So I'm just thinking not having this, this easy security of a clear origin and a clear home country and home uh, culture and so forth. It's hard, I, I get that, but also um, I think it opens so many new opportunities up to, you know, and new ways to describe yourself, to view yourself and to view other human beings. So that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Once we get there with a bit of, of maturity and life experience, probably. Yeah. That's the, that's the gift of being uh, a, a true global citizen. That exactly. You 
So I'm curious, you lived in, in so many different countries and you have different uh, heritage as well. Um, how have these countries and cultures shaped your identity? Well, I think it's more about becoming tolerant, first of all, and being curious. What are these, um, you know, even in language, if you, I mean, I think when you are moving to a country and especially, especially in Europe, every country has different language. I think it's mandatory to start learning this language because if you are going to settle down, you came here and you don't, and you know, I meet a lot of people who are telling, oh, I'm, I, I have been living here for 10 years or 15 years and they don't even speak. And then they're really complaining a lot about this and about that. But first of all, if you decided to leave somewhere, I think it's just like really respectful to <laughs> learn at least a very very, you know, basic level, if you don't want to go deep, but at least basic level of language. The second thing is language really contains the way people think, like their mindset. For example, when I lived in Germany, I at the first was like a lot of things were like cultural shock but when i started to learn language i started to understand how actually people think why they behave this way and you literally can understand this by through just really understanding how people think why they form sentences this way okay they think like that so you are starting like tolerating the, their behavior you start to understand why the system works this and that doesn't mean that you have to fit into the system but at least when you understand what you are dealing with you can find or create your own opportunities without really you know being this person who is like rebel and then complaining oh i don't have friends or nobody understands me <laughs> you respect the, the 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 people around you cultures traditions language and when you respect others obviously they respect you and i think it also starts from yourself i mean as i mentioned yes maybe you have you feeling not comfortable in a foreign country but the more you are feeling comfortable inside yourself it doesn't matter where you are based it doesn't matter where you are relocating this kind of sense of peace inside being really comfortable in your own skin it also allows you to very quickly adapt to different cultures. And I think another aspect of how it really um, shaped my identity is that I started like really, sometimes you move to new, for example, in Poland, I have been living for three years. And in the beginning it was like, okay, um, how can I like start understanding people more? Because in a way I am enjoying being here. People are more open. Um, I feel here like, at home <laughs> in some extent extent but um i think just going out and communicating with locals and see oh okay they actually found people <laughs> and so you're becoming more you know open as well and also it's like you know being how can i say it you know like <laughs> better ways really becoming not adaptable in a bad way that I'm just bland in the, no matter where I am, but very, very flexible, you know, that also helps you in business. It doesn't matter with what kind of culture you do business, you're becoming this flexible person. Oh, okay, so we're going this direction, that direction, because I do believe in business, it's all about speed of implementation and how you're going to adapt to different changes in the outside world. And it really teaches you this kind of flexibility in terms of mindset and in terms of uh, communication as well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing your, your take on this and your experience. And then you mentioned culture shock. So um, I know so many people can relate to this. Um, do you have some tips for women who are currently struggling with culture shock? Well, I think it's inevitable, right? Because we have been raised in a specific environment, culture, and when we just moved for the very first time, and like, you know, the foundation is shaking because, oh my gosh, they actually do completely opposite things or something strange that's not really even 
uh, you know, applicable in our culture. This can be like Asian culture and, uh, you know, Europeans completely different things. Also, how you communicate. For example, for me, it was really strange to say, you know, there are different levels, how you communicate with people who are older. And, you know, in Europe, it's like just, oh, hey, you, hey, you. So that was really hard to yeah i still cannot speak like that like say you know in german say do do is like you you instead of like z is like more polite way to speak either with the strangers or with people who are older especially my trainer he's like a legend he's older like 30 years than myself and telling him like in a very disrespectful way was at least for me it was disrespectful it was one of the main cultural shock shocks but i think um again it's i think it's very important not to lose yourself i mean if everybody are doing that but it goes like you feel inside discomfort i don't think you should do this you should like push yourself because um i it's also like two sides for example it, yes i come to this new culture new community whatever it is but it doesn't mean that i have to lose myself in it and you still need to, it's really great opportunity to redefine what are you made of and what are your values. And as I said, okay, other people can speak like this with, let's, let's take the same example with this trainer, but I was still speaking with him in my way, respected way. And actually people do appreciate it sometimes, right? <laughs> if not, also you don't need to change yourself anyhow, just to be lovable or to be accepted. Uh, it's about like still being yourself, still knowing your being true to your identity, but at the same time starting to open, okay, to what I can say yes and to and what 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 kind of new things I can try. Because sometimes we don't know if we like something or we don't. It can be food, it can be the way people communicate, how they spend leisure time. If you don't like it, I mean, you don't need to force yourself just to be like, oh, yes, you're a native guy. If you feel comfortable with this, then it's cool. It's great. So you found something new. It's yeah. also a lot about self-discovery journey. That's why it's so great to travel, try new things, because when we are living like this and like stuck in our own world, so to say, um, it feels like okay, this is just list of things that I think I like, or able to do capable to deal with. But when you do something you've never done before, or with the places where never been never lived, never communicated with these people, you start to explore a different facet of yourself. And if you look from this perspective, not just like, Oh, my gosh, I'm so struggling, I'm so culturally shocked, it's already close yourself from this experience. And you will be the one who is in struggle. But if you open yourself up and say, okay, let's go on this journey today and see what do I really appreciate, what kind of great things I can find in this new place, what kind of nice people I can meet, it really makes your journey easier. You will be still maybe fe feeling like uncomfortable or you need time to adapt, maybe you're like missing your home, but the journey will be different, like more positive vibes, let's say, <laughs> than yeah. just being all like blocking new things, well, and complaining. What I hear you say is that the this right balance between a really good self-knowledge and rootedness in who you are and, and how you define yourself, but at the same time remaining open and curious, not just about the other culture and the people, but also about who you get to be in this other culture and context, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm, I love that. And so um, I don't know if you have already mentioned that in addition to everything you do, you also are a mom of two. Yes, I am. <laughs> so I believe. Pardon? Two small children, right? Yeah, they're three and six. <laughs> Three and six, yeah. Okay, so uh, you now, you are a, a third culture kid and now you continue this international lifestyle with your own family. Um, what is that like? Do you encounter any challenges? Because I know that so many women, uh, they can kind of handle it themselves, you know, now we move here, now we move there. But when it comes to the kids, that's when they get really concerned. Like, what is mm -hmm. the best 
physician for my child? Will my child thrive? Will we go? Will it be my fault somehow if I take them out of their, you know, their environment and then they don't adapt well? So mm -hmm. I know this is such a topic of of pressure on on many expat moms. Yeah. What can you say about this and what would you tell these women? Well, when we decide to be parents, we decide to carry this responsibility. Everything has price to pay. And I think this is like, again, the reminder to the society that, you know, we all see these nice pictures or sometimes we have this pressure, especially like in Asian cultures, but not only uh, like you have to be mom, you have to be parent. And I think starting from this point you're ready we have to open these conversations do you really want to have a kid do you really want to be this mom can you actually be and give to your child i think this is one thing but when we move forward further and say okay i want to be mom this was my dream i have now family and i take the full responsibility for this and all the decisions of course it impacts your decision making a lot because when you alone when i was was alone I could just like pack and go and now I have to consider education I have to consider what language they're going to speak and it really affected in a way because when we lived in Germany my eldest daughter I thought okay she will be bilingual like German and Russian because my native language is Russian but when we moved in Dubai I started to realize that she's not really speaking too much because there was also English and okay, I had to make this decision. Okay, let's speak German at home. And when we go out, you'll be speaking and learning English. So it was just like making life for her easier, right? So, and now we're in Poland. So they do speak three languages because they learn Polish also in kindergarten. But the thing, speak? pardon? What does your husband speak? German. Ah, oh, okay. That's why you pick German. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so this kind of already impacts your decision making where you're going to leave. But I think it's just every single uh, parent or parents have specific criteria what is important for them, right? Is it an education or they say you know you they can just homeschooling have these virtual teachers and we can travel the world and show our teachers how this world is actually huge and have so different varieties and also kids are learning to be flexible learning that okay there are different cultures people are different we don't need to be the same but of course for me was the biggest concern is that um we actually chose a private kindergarten and also looking for like you know international school because i had kind of <laughs> fear that they are not like bullied for example because they look different because they don't speak the language of course there are a lot of concerns still but from the other side if you feel like I don't know, there are different life situations. And for some reason, uh, maybe you decided to reunite with your loved one <laughs> and you're like single mom or the whole family decided to move somewhere. Or maybe you're still a single parent and, and feels like you have more opportunities in this country. Go for it. Because first of all, I do believe that our kids on a soul level they picked up us as parents for a reason. <laughs> they knew what they are like signed up for. It's like, I know for my kids, it may, might be not the easiest way, like it's not, uh, it was never like stable, just every day, the same things. Sometimes kids do need this. From the other side, I think they already like saw a lot of different countries. They have this kind of international experience. Uh, the most important for any mom, it's, this is just my perspective. Don't push yourself in this guilty energy because kids are feeling it. And the most important for kids, like, as you know by yourself, they are not like following our words. They are following our behavior. So we are role modeling through our actions. And when they see, okay, mommy is working or she needs to move there, but she's happy. That's what makes you happy. She's this kind of amazing person who lights up. And she like, or he like, the ch a child understands it's okay. There is a freedom to do what you really love to do. You are not a tree. You can just move yourself whenever you want to move to be this happy person. 
so they are learning and nowadays my kids are just like oh they take computer they do calls they do shows <laughs> they do all these things because they see these actions and they are free to self-express themselves no matter where they leave so they're very feeling yeah, free a valuable lesson that they get to learn at this really young age and I'm wondering, I know they're still small. So I think, you know, at different years when they will be more vocal about whether they yeah. like it or not, they, they are to come. But is there something that you do to strengthen strengthen them and their approach to being different, to looking different, to being a foreigner, to not being a native speaker of the of the dominant language? Or, or maybe something that you experienced when you were a child in the situation? Well, uh, the thing is, uh, of course, I don't have a teen. I think it's a completely different conversation. I just can add on it as a psychologist, right? It's a completely different age when you don't need to push this process and tell the kid all the time what he or she is supposed to be. It's just all about full acceptance and giving this uh, kid ghetto like it's already like a lot like the hormonal changes trying to understand who you are what you like new friends new horizons and when they feel this insecure that they are not allowed to be who they are at home doesn't matter in which country you live they just push you as a parent even more away <laughs> and close themselves and if you're the person who is giving okay i see you whatever you are, whoever you are, whatever you want, I support you, I love you, I understand it's a hard journey, but if you want to speak with me, we're open. But with my personal experience, like with the kids, it's always conversation and trying to explain them in a very simple language. It's like preparing them in advance, like for example, oh, you know, there are families who are not constantly living in one home. Yeah. Do, are you interested in exploring a new home? Uh, and I show them pictures. Like when we were about to move in Dubai, I was showing like beautiful pictures like seaside. And uh, when we were traveling there just to see if we would love to actually stay there, she really loved it. And nowadays when she still thinks, oh, we are traveling to Dubai next week. It's like, why <laughs> do you, do, are you missing this place, right? So it's about just like preparing in advance, step by step, not to say, we're packing let's go <laughs> yeah involving them as much as possible depending on also yeah. the changes and yeah. I love the advice that you gave of the more accepting we can be of who our child is on a soul level so like just his or her innate way of of being um the more accepting that child can be of him or herself and also on the the environment that they live in right yeah I love that. Okay, so um, a question that I ask everyone who comes on here is, what does being an empowered expat woman mean to you? Well, empowered expat woman, um, I think it's a combination of having this uh, self-confidence to be who you truly are. And as I mentioned, not trying to fit in everywhere. And at the same time, no matter where you're living, try to find, try and like, not trying, but actually finding out what serves you. And also career-wise, if you want to work for specific companies, go for it. And, you know, you can always find the ways and steps how to get this job. Maybe sometimes it can take uh, longer, like maybe you need to learn language or go through specific procedures, right, to get it. But don't give up and just find this excuse that, oh, because I'm an expat, I'm this because I'm a foreigner. I'm not accepted. I understand it. Sometimes we do face this uh, discrimination or racism, right? So it's part of it. But you cannot say also generalize and say, oh, that's all Germans or that's all, you know, Dutch people, or this and that. You can't say that because in every single country, city, <laughs> part of the city, different people. And when you are yourself, you are attracting the same kind of tribe, people who will accept you, people who will understand you. I think it's important to find also a couple of people with whom you can speak. <laughs> As I sounded, I share some great things or some new things, uh, join some kind of meetups. Uh, when I lived in Germany, we had this uh, Russian speaking moms community. 
and we were gathering every week in different household and just you know what is the best doctor what is the best pediatrician what is the best school mm -hmm. so it's always great source of exchanging information yeah. but i think again it all comes to uh be comfortable in your skin <clears throat> and then just the power is you have this power inside you bring it with yourself in every single country <laughs> right yeah that's such a good reminder that really we bring ourselves to every different country and we need to define what that should mean right yeah. like who is that what is that power that we want to take from one place to the next because we do have control over that so I love that. Thank you so much. Oh, this was really amazing. You have so much, you've lived so much and you have so much to share. So thank you for coming on here and, and doing it. So and now uh, please let us know, first of all, I know you're working on some really exciting projects right now that you alluded to before. Uh, so what is that? And also where can people find out more about you and follow you? Well, um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's like having this international <laughs> experience and background. It's for me, I think it's one of the missions to un really unite people. And now I had this call, I think one and a half years ago to create a documentary. Well, just um, short, like long story short, <clears throat> when I was a like, first time mom, after having this exciting life, traveling around the world, living my dream life, uh, being this champion who is like dancing the best competitions in the world and really making my dream come true. At some point, I found myself like sitting home in four walls um, and didn't really understand what's next in my life. And I started to interview successful women who achieved a lot. It was a small, tiny blog that turned to events, then to community. And for our community, we did a documentary, then Spoken Truth, uh, why they are like, what, what does independent woman means? And this movie was nominated to movie festival. And since then I had a dream to create like really real production, like, you know, <laughs> travel the world, do the shootings. And now it's kind of coming true. So I'm creating a documentary series, Speak Up, where I bring different women from different nationalities, ages, background, industries, to speak up the truth about their path to success, what kind of bringing on the surface all the misconceptions and stereotypes woman has to face that delays her, uh, you know, like delays her results, delays her uh, wishes, what they want to achieve, but also it really impacts us mentally lots of like the percentage is like <laughs> uncomparable how many women have the suicidal thoughts and struggle no matter in what kind of industry because of discrimination because we're told you know um you are a girl you're supposed to be on the kitchen there are still things or sending women to do abortion just because she's expecting a girl still happens nowadays and the point is we don't speak enough about a lot of issues and because we don't speak enough about this we don't want to find the solutions and create change. So, of course, I cannot change a lot of things by myself. That's why I'm just creating this movement, Speak Up, that really empowers uh, particularly women to speak up with their gifts, with their abilities, in order to light up the path of others. And this documentary just brings all these talents, all these amazing people together to start the change that our kids I have two girls, <laughs> they don't have to go, like they don't need like spend decades to self prove themselves that they're good enough and they're capable. That like the examples in, in film industry, you know, this is like made a lot of like Asian women first Oscar, you know, yeah. took over 50 years. And it's not only entertainment, it's never single. Women are still underpaid and companies are hiring women and telling that they are so much diverse, not because of that, they're just saving the costs because women are getting like less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need to change it. I love that. That's so such an imp uh, important subject that you are raising awareness about and, and speaking up uh, on. And I think, you know, even though, like you said, we as a single person, maybe we can't change the world. We can definitely impact. We can't change the world. At the very, very least, you're showing other women and your daughters that 
you can talk about these things. And I, I think that's already such a big difference to what it used to be where you simply could not talk about it. So I think when you can talk about it, that's the that's how you get the real turning and eventually you will create change through that, right? Yeah. So I'm glad that you're doing that. I cannot wait to see mm -hmm. it. Um, where will we find out about when this documentary is released and everything else that you're doing and and just able be able to follow you? Well, in any social media, also, I don't know if we can <clears throat> leave a link. We're doing a crowdfunding, inviting people to be part of the conversation. They can just fall, also jump into the private group and see <clears throat> behind the scenes how things are created. Uh, also, I don't know how you can, you can benefit from this, uh, find more visibility, publicity, connections with all these influential women. Uh, this is part of this, like just the concept of everything is give and get. It's not just only take, 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 but it's really an energy exchange. So whatever you find for yourself beneficial, if it's just supporting because you love the project or benefit from the rewards that we are offering to our um, contributors to this crowdfunding or simply, I don't know, maybe it's media partners, maybe you know somebody who can uh, help us to raise funds, you know, women, and raising funds, it's also tricky sometimes because, you know, you have to prove that you can make it happen. And we definitely can do it. And it's just also another layer of change. So you are just invited and welcome. We can maybe leave the share the, the link. I will leave all the links to, to your social media and to mm -hmm. all the other uh, the crowdfunding and so forth that you mentioned. I will leave that in the show notes. So ladies, check them out and make sure you follow Valerie for everything that's that's coming up which sounds really exciting so with that i thank you so much for being here and talking to us and sharing your experience it's been amazing to have you and um yes to all of you listeners and viewers i will be back with you next week thank you bye <laughs>